All right, here we are back for day four, which feels like day 576 to me, but apparently it's only four days. So here we go. So today I'm pretty much going to be taking out all of this floor right here. Um, I wasn't really expecting this extent of water damage, um, but I'm just going to end up taking it all out. I started out with my circular saw, set it about half an inch depth because I wasn't entirely sure what the framing of this floor was made out of. And if it was aluminum, I for sure didn't want to cut into the aluminum with my circular saw um, because I don't even know if it would, to be honest with you. But I wasn't fixing to take any chances. So I just ran it along the um, walls of the camper right there, the sides, um, just to kind of get a good cut right there. And then I ended up measuring, um, I think it was seven feet out from the front point right there. So I can make... Um, pretty much a really long straight line that I will eventually cut with my circular saw to get a nice straight cut. As you can see, I'm using some really precise measuring here. Um, and <laughs> this scrap piece of wood that I had laying around in the shop, um, I use that to make my straight line. And then I just free handed this cut right here. Um, I guess it comes with experience. I've gotten pretty good at cutting straight lines. So, you know, if you do it enough, you get pretty good at it. Now, by the end of this video, you're going to be like, why didn't you do this differently? Why did you do it this way versus the way you did it at the end of the video? And that's because I didn't know uh, what was underneath this floor. I feel like whenever I start cutting into a camper, you never really know what you're going to come across. And so I always like to err on the side of caution because this could be like the water tank could be under this thing. You could have a ton of electrical underneath the floor. Like you literally never know what's going to be underneath this floor. So right here, I'm getting my multi-tool and I'm pretty much just cutting the rest of that like 16th of an inch off. Um, and there was foam underneath this floor. So I just, I'm, I'm not really too worried about going deep into the foam because I ended up taking all of the foam up anyway. Um, but I'm just cleaning up my edges. That way I can start uh, pulling this OSB off of the floor. Now I do want to pause for a second and kind of show you something. Um, so this is my screwdriver test right here that I do. So if you see right there, super wet, it digs into it really easily. And then I move to this spot that's got a little bit of white on it. Um, it doesn't really go in there, um, which is great. And then this spot right here, definitely still solid, pretty good. But then you go over here and it kind of looks white like the other one did. Um, and look what happens to the screwdriver. So this is my lesson to you. Always dig out your floor with a screwdriver to decide where your water damage ends. Don't always go by color because color can be deceiving. So I was really, really, really hoping that if I got this pry bar and kind of loosened the top part of this flooring where it was still pretty solid, that this whole piece would come up. Um, that is not what ended up happening. So this whole front section here, I ended up doing it piece by piece, which was super frustrating and super annoying. But I was thinking to myself, man, I'm not going to the gym today. I guess this is going to be my workout for the day. And so I just decided I was going to go for it. So piece by piece and inch by inch, I got my hammer and I pretty much just scraped away this OSB that was on basically glued to the foam. Um, I, this is the first camper that I have had to do this with because all of the other ones had wood frames. Um, but this one was just built a little bit differently and it's fine. I've, I've I always see things as a new learning experience because I can guarantee that somebody down the road is going to ask me, Hey, how do I fix this camper? Um, because the last camper that I worked on with foam like this, it was only a quarter of an inch thick. Um, so that was kind of easy to peel up and fix, but this one was actually half inch, um, I guess probably seven sixteenths OSB, uh, which is a little bit thicker. Um, so yeah, I just, I had to take this up literally inch by inch and it took freaking forever to do this wasn't so bad on the spots that were like really rotten um but kind of the front part right there because I always go a little bit past um the rotten part it was kind of rough but I just decided that I was going to make the best of it I got my bluetooth speaker I put on some worship jams and I just kind of went with it now, if y'all have never done hard work to worship jams, I'm going to need you to reconsider because it is literally the best. You're sitting there and you're worshiping God and it's like, all right, this really, really sucks, but here I am worshiping the God of the universe. So it kind of makes it a little bit better. Anyway, so I'm just, 
going going at it here. Um, it was really satisfying when they came up in big chunks. Ooh, almost fell. You see right there. Um, <laughs> it's really satisfying when some of these came up in big chunks because I worked at this for so long. I actually I started at this at like nine o'clock in the morning. And then I just got tired and sweaty and hot. And then I ended up stopping and going to Wendy's and getting some lunch. And then I came back. Um, this back part right here was actually really easy to take off. This was probably the best part of the whole. Also, I don't know if you guys know anything about the gym. But I'm trying really hard to lift with my legs and not my back. Um, I do a lot of deadlifts and squats. And so uh, um, I've hurt my back enough times to know <laughs> not to lift with your back. So if you guys are going to attempt this, try to lift this up with your legs and not your back. Because, um, yeah, you'll thank me later. Okay, 9 million hours later, I'm hot. I'm sweaty. You see, like, I'm literally covered in sweat. This is the part of renovations that nobody tells you about. Is like, I have literally have sweat dripping in my eyes. That's why I'm shaking my head like this. So, um, yeah, it's a great workout. That That's what I'm going to go with. But as you can see, I've got most of it done right here. Um, and so I'm taking my multi-tool and I'm going along the edges because there is about an inch and a half left on both sides from where I ran my circular saw across that wall. So I'm going to get the rest of those little inch and a half scrap pieces of wood off um, and just kind of go from there. Now, this is tucked underneath the walls um, and I haven't really decided what I'm going to do about that yet. I think I might just leave it and um, kind of let it dry out because it seems like a lot to try to replace the wood underneath there if it's already kind of sandwiched in there. So this actually had some supports um, kind of in the middle and I took those out um, and the reason I did that was because this foam was actually really, really wet and I didn't want to leave it there and have all the water soak into the new flooring I was going to put in. So I started off by kind of scraping this foam away, um, until I realized that underneath this foam was actually really wet too. So how this was made is it's kind of like a tarp type material and then quarter inch plywood or eighth inch paneling. And then they glued foam on top of that. And then they glued 716's OSB on top of that. And so I'm basically going to take this entire thing out because it was all bad. I mean, like it was, it was so bad. Um, and I was not expecting that to be honest with you, but I'm glad I figured it out on this big section right here versus when I went back in the bathroom and tried to figure it out. Um, cause it's going to be a whole lot easier to remove the bathroom, uh, when I already know how the floor is structured and how it's already built. And to be honest with you, I was a little disappointed that it was wood framing in here and not aluminum framing because everything else in this camper is aluminum framing. So I was really hoping that this was too, but that was not the case. Um, but it's really not a big deal because they didn't actually tuck this framing underneath the walls, which works to my advantage. Um, so I can basically just put new framing in and frame around this whole thing and call it a day. So this is actually the cool part where I figured out I can just take the whole thing up, which is going to make life a lot easier. And I don't have to sit here and scrape all this foam off. Um, I get my multi-tool and I kind of scored along that edge that I'd already cut and pretty much pull this whole piece up right there. Now, once I do that, it's going to expose that um, basically weatherproof material underneath. And um, I'll end up taking that up because some of it got damaged for whatever reason. Um, there's some like holes in it and stuff like that. So I'm just going to end up replacing this entire piece right here, including the bottom weatherproofing part. Now, I wish I would have figured this out a lot sooner, but this is honestly just part of repairing RVs uh, because they really all are made differently. I wish there was some like book that you could, you know, look at and be like, oh, this is how this one's made and this is how they frame this one out. But there's not. So it's really just kind of trial and error. Also, I'm sure some of you are thinking right now, like, oh my gosh, why are you stepping on that? There's no framing right there. There's nothing there. This is actually the main frame of the camper that I'm stepping on. Um, so you don't have to worry about me falling through the floor. I didn't fall through the floor at all. So if that makes you feel any better. Um, and this really just comes out piece by piece. Um, I'm really glad I ended up taking the whole thing off and not trying to repair that bottom part because it was just so bad. Um, there was really no coming back from that. So next I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. I'm getting all these foam chunks out the way. Um, that way I can I just, I don't know. I just, I just stood there and I looked over and I tried to make a plan. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not saving any of this stuff. I'm just going to rebuild the whole thing. And sometimes it's like that. Um, you know, honestly, I would rather take everything out just to be on the safe side than sell this camper to a client and then them have the same problem 
as I just fixed. And I think part of the reason is, is like, this is a lot of work for me to fix this. And I don't ever want to have to rip everything out like this again. So it's one of those things where it's like, well, might as well do it now. So I actually only cut like an eight by seven foot section right there on that side. So there's still water damage underneath this slide. And so I'm going to tackle that next. So I'm going to take this cover right here. This covers the wheel well. Um, I want to make sure I get that uh, wood that's underneath this little whatever that wheel well cover. I want to make sure I get the wood that's underneath that um, and replace this all as one piece. So I pretty much just ripped this out and wiggle this out. It was like stuck underneath a cabinet and it had another screw in it, but it wasn't worth me taking the cabinet out to get it. So I ended up cutting the carpet and then kind of sliding the whole piece out. So once that was out, I'm going to start measuring and marking where I want to cut. So pretty much all that white stuff right there is rotten. Um, a little bit of his glue, but most of it is rotten. And I always go a little bit past what I think is rotten just to be on the safe side. Um, so you see how my multi-tool right here and I cut along the side that's closest to the slide. Because um, again, that stuff is tucked underneath the wall. So I did need to cut that. And then I'm measuring over. Um, so I know how far to make my cut so I can make kind of a straight line right here. Again, very precise with my scrap piece of wood right here. Um, <laughs> and then I'll basically do the same thing, um, lengthwise, I guess lengthwise. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'll just kind of freehand it and cut it. And my stick was too long there to fit. So I got this like random piece of trim that looks relatively straight, um, and kind of use that and cut it over. So once I have all my pencil marks, I just get my circular saw and cut it along my pencil mark. Now this is the first time I cut it. I cut this at a half inch depth. Um, and after I thought about this and tried to like get it up, I realized I should just cut this at, I think it's like almost an inch depth, um, but that's okay. You live and you learn. So I'm just finishing this cut right here up to that wheel well because my circular saw obviously doesn't go all the way up to the wheel well. Um, and then I'm just kind of cutting the foam and um, running my multi-tool all along that cut that I just made. So this is the part where I started to think in my head, why am I doing it like this? Because when I started pulling it up, I was like, I really don't want to have to go get my hammer and like chuck it away like each piece by piece. You see, I started to do that here and then in my brain, I was like, wait a second, like I'm taking all this up anyway. I know how this is framed out. I'm just going to make this a really, really deep cut and just take it all out. So that's really what I ended up doing. Um, I got my circular saw and I basically just uh, set it at the depth that I thought it was from the thickness of the OSB with the foam in it, with the eighth inch paneling on the bottom. Um, and then I ran it all along the side that I already had just cut. Uh, so as you can see right here, it still hasn't clicked in my head. It hasn't clicked. And now it has. You see I'm measuring it right there. Um, sometimes it takes me a few minutes, especially when it's like the end of the day and I'm tired. So here we go. Uh, just going to run it all along the side. And then I actually lucked out on this because right beside that hole that's right there in the slide is, I think that's the fresh water tank. And so I like barely missed the fresh water tank. And that is part of the reason why I always say I don't want to like rip into things. So um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't go any deeper because that would have sucked. So I kind of tried to pull it up and it didn't really come up. And I think it's because of this corner right here. And so I got my multi-tool and I tried to basically I don't know, cut more of the wood and then it still wasn't coming up. So I kind of tried to pry it. Um, and basically just work it up a little more so I could pull the entire thing up. I got my multi-tool back out and tried to cut it a little more and then tried to pry it a little more. It was the, all the resistance was coming from that corner right there. Um, and again, I'm always lifting with my legs and not my back. And I was kind of feeling like it was getting a little too heavy. So, um, I started to cut more, pry it up a little more, and then it actually eventually came up once I cut a little bit deeper with my multi-tool right. So once I got it at the right depth, I could finally pry the whole thing up, which works really well. Um, and then it exposed basically all of the framing underneath. Um, I ended up taking that little um, piece right there off the bottom, the, the weather stripping, um, and then just making sure I didn't hit anything. 
Um, and then I pretty much just got my razor blade and cut the rest of this rotten wet weather stripping off and I'll in put up um, basically I was thinking about putting quarter inch plywood with um, kind of like gluing a tarp type material on the bottom of it and just sticking the whole thing down and then putting my framing directly on top of that. So I'll end up rebuilding this whole thing but for now it seemed like it was easier just to remove all of it. Again, I'm walking on the actual framing itself, trying to use, you know, like balancing act right here. Um, but I didn't fall in, so I guess I would say that is a success for the day. So after this, I pretty much just took a pause and I'll reconvene tomorrow or, you know, whenever else I get around to it. 